Let's talk about one of the most fundamental and underrated concept of a networking which is CIDR and how based on this CIDR ranges the IP addresses are calculated. So in this video we are going to take a look like how the CIDR ranges are defined and how the IP addresses are calculated. But before that it is really important for you to understand few of the examples of the CIDR ranges and you can see how the IP address calculation affects based on the CIDR ranges. So here onto the screen you can see this is the first CIDR range which is ending with slash 24. And if a IP range or CIDR range is ending with a slash 24 then which means you have a 256 IP addresses which you can create out of it. Let's take a one more example. So here it is ending with slash 16 and as the number is going down then your IP ranges are increasing. So don't worry, we, I'm just going to show you the calculation like how you can put down and write down those calculation and you can calculate the IP addresses. But here the important thing is that you need to understand this concept. The lower the number of our CIDR range, the higher the IP addresses you will get. And if I reduce this number further down, so here you can see the CIDR range is ending with slash 8 and here you can see around 16 million IP addresses are possible out of this CIDR range. So the question come is like how we are calculating these IP addresses when the number is going down. Alright, so before we even jump to the calculation part, it's very important for you to understand the IP address and how many bits an IP address contain. So here you can see this is an example of an IPv4 address and this IPv4 address is of 32 bits and how these 32 bits are calculated. So let's divide this uh, like uh, IP address into the four pieces and each piece is of eight bits. So here you can see this is uh, first which is 11 then zero which is also eight bit one is also eight bit and the last one is also eight bit and all of these four digits are separated by the period sign which you can see over here. And once you sum all of these then you will get a 32 bit IP address. Now you might be wondering that why do I need to take care of this 32 bit when I need to calculate the IP range based of the CIDR ranges. But keep in mind this 32 bit is going to play a crucial role when you are going to calculate the IP addresses out of our CIDR ranges. So here you can see this is the CIDR range which is ending with slash 28 and we need to calculate the IP addresses possible out of this CIDR range. To calculate that what you need to do you just need to subtract this 28 from 32 and this 32 is coming from our IP address which is like an any IP4 address is of 32 bit. So any CIDR notation which is either ending with 28, 24, 16 or 8 you just need to subtract from 32. If it would have been 8 then I would have put 32 minus 8. If it would have been 24 then I would have put 32 minus 24 but here in this example I am just subtracting 30 I am just subtracting 28 from 32 and I am getting the answer which is 4 and once you get the answer after subtracting from 32 then the next thing which you need to do is you just need to calculate like 2 raised to the power 4 so if it would have been instead of 28 it would have been 16 then you would have got an answer 16 over here because 32 minus 16 will equates to 16 then you need to do 2 raised to the power 16 so if any IP ranges uh, ends with 16 then the answer will be 16 after subtracting from 32 and then you need to put 2 raised to the power 16 but here I just wanted to keep the calculation simple so that you can understand this calculation so here the answer is 4 and then we are going to do 2 raised to the power 4 and once we do the 2 raised to the power 4 then the answer comes out to be 16 addresses. So with this CIDR notation you will be able to get 16 addresses for your network. Alright so now we know that 16 addresses are possible out of the CIDR range but how the addresses will look like. So here this is an example which I would like to show you. So these are the 16 possible IP addresses which you can assign within your network. So here you can see all the IP addresses will end with the last digit. So here the last digit will start from the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it will go all the way till 16. 
So where uh, 11.0.1.0 is going to be your first IP address and the last IP address is going to be 11.0.1.15. So this is how the IP address calculation is done based on the CIDR range notation. Now you are a bit more knowledgeable about the IP address calculation and with, now you can calculate the possible IP addresses. But in reality, how you are going to assign these CIDR ranges to your VPCs and subnet? That becomes a real pain point if you don't assign a proper site or ranges within your network. So let's take a look like how you can create uh, your own VPC, how you can create your own subnet and you can assign those IP ranges or CIDR ranges to those VPCs and subnet so that you don't run out of your IP addresses. Let's start with the VPC because VPC is your bigger network component in which all of your devices will be present. So let me show you like how the VPC and subnet will look like. So here is your VPC and inside that VPC you will have a public subnet and you will have a private subnet and even you can have a more than two, three, four subnets within your VPC and all of them can be private and all of them can be public and uh, few of them can be public and few of them can be private. It totally depends upon your business requirement. But anyway, we are just here to discuss about the CIDR ranges. So VPC is always going to be an outer shell for your IP ranges. So VPC will always get higher number of IP addresses. So here you can see uh, that I have created a VPC with the IP uh, or the CIDR range 11.0.0 slash 16, which means I can have a 65,536 IPs within that particular VPC. But within that VPC, I have created a public subnet and I have created a private subnet. So these subnets are just a child unit of my VPC. So if these are the child unit of my VPC, then of course it is going to get lesser number of IPs. These child unit cannot be greater than the VPC IP addresses. So here, whenever I'm just going to create a subnet, then I'm just going to assign the CIDR range where I get lesser number of IPs than my VPC. So here in this VPC, I was able to get 65,536 IPs, but here I have assigned the range where I'm only getting 256 IPs for my public subnet and the same for my private subnet. And the I CIDR ranges, uh, which for public subnet and private subnets are ending with slash 24 and for both my public as well as for private subnet. So out of 65,000, I have consumed 256 into my public subnet and I have consumed 256 into my private subnet. And I'm still left with quite a lot of IPs which I can assign to devices within my VPC. So I can even go further and create few more VPCs with little higher number of IP addresses which can be covered through my CIDR notation. I hope this video will clear out all of your doubt regarding the how the CIDR ranges are defined and how the IP addresses are calculated. In the next video, I'm just going to talk about the NAT which stands for Network Address Translation which is one of the most unique and fundamental concept of a networking. So see you into the next session. Till then, take care and bye-bye.